What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and when it comes to working in Revit, one of the, the uh, overall most uh, common complaints that they get is, well, I can't create details in Revit. Revit is horrible for details. Uh, if you're going to create details in AutoCAD, well, then what's the point of using Revit in the first place? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be busting that myth and I'm going to be showing you how to create actual details and how to use CAD details inside of Revit. So if you've been working in AutoCAD for a long time, as most architects have, and then you're switching into Revit, you probably have a lot of CAD details on hand. And Revit actually has the ability to incorporate those CAD details inside of your project. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do just that, how to incorporate CAD details inside of Revit. Now, before we get into that, we'd just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And also make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials and also I create some courses. So I've got a lot of these, uh, both beginner, intermediate and advanced courses. They're all available on my website, balkanarchitect.com. That's going to be the first link in the description. And also the second link in the description is going to be to my Patreon. There I host all of my Revit project files, like these files that I'm going to be creating for this tutorial, as well as some of those advanced courses. So if you're interested, check it out. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into the tutorial. And here we are in Revit. So I'm just going to start a new project by going here to models and then going to new. And for the uh, template uh, file, I'm just going to be using the Balkan Arctic template. Uh, if you're interested in getting my template, either the metric or the imperial version, uh, it is available uh, in the description of this video. You can go to my website and you can get my template. Let's just click OK and that's going to start Revit up. Let's wait for a few moments and then we can start working on our detail. Uh, now for this detail, uh, because we're going to be using a CAD detail, uh, we don't really have to have too much geometry here in Revit. So I'm just going to add uh, just a little something here to have. So let's say we have uh, a wall here, just like that. And then also let's add a floor just like this finish. There we go. And then also I'm going to go here to the section and open up a section like this. Open it up. There we go. So here we have a wall and then a floor. And of course, uh, you can create a uh, you can create a call out out of this and that's sort of a regular detail view in Revit. But the call out basically uh, allows you to manipulate the existing geometry by adding additional annotational elements uh, by going here to annotate. Maybe you can add some insulation, you can add some detail lines, filled regions, uh, so on and so forth. And basically you use this to manipulate uh, this um, section into a detail view. Now, if you already have a detail view uh, that you maybe have from AutoCAD or something like that, uh, or you have uh, access to some sort of a database with CAD details, you're probably going to want to include that uh, for your Revit projects. And it doesn't really make sense to kind of model everything again or to draw everything again if you already have it. So uh, let me show you how that works. So in order to create a new uh, detail uh, from a CAD file, what you need to do is go here to view and then we have to create a drafting view. So it's called a drafting view. Well, because it's exactly how it sounds like it's a drafting view. Uh, so basically, you open it up here, you can set up the scale, let's go with one to 20, for example, click OK. And this drafting view is just an empty view. So it's just a view for drafting. So you can go here to the annotate tab, you can use detail lines, and then you can draft out your view. So it allows you to use just the basic drafting tools, basically going back into AutoCAD to create some uh, specific details that you might want to use and then reuse in future projects. I think it's really useful to have something uh, like this. But now let's explore how can we import a CAD detail into this drafting view. And also keep in mind that here the drafting view will appear under drafting views, just underneath sections. And here we have that drafting one view. We can call this one, maybe rename it into drafting section. There we go. Okay, so now to import a CAD file, you just go here to insert 
and then of course you go to import CAD and then here uh, I'm just have it here on my desktop I have this CAD detail uh, you should probably uh, make sure that you, that the units are correct uh, I, Revit has this u import units option uh, but it uh, it can be a bit difficult to use and it can be a bit tricky to to, to get it to work just right and uh, it works perfect uh, when it comes to floor plans or sections, things like that. But when you have details or site plans, it tends to mess up. So I like to set it up manually. This is, I think, in centimeters. So let's set that up like that and then hit open. And as you can see, the file will open up just like that this. So as you can see here we have our CAD file, our CAD detail and you're probably thinking well that's fine and well but what if I want to adjust it, it just highlights like this. Well don't worry, what you can always do is explode that. So you can just go here to explode, wait for a few moments. It, it has to delete some elements, it, uh, I guess it found some filled regions which it didn't like really much. But anyways, once we explode this, we can now manipulate it. So for example, if this beam uh, is like this, we can make it longer. For example, this beam is a 42 centimeter uh, high uh, beam. And if I make it uh, uh, a bit larger, so let's say if I measure from here, it's 42 centimeters. Let's say I want to make it 52 centimeters. I can extend it like that. And then I can select this hatch, extend that as well. And we have a larger beam. So you can play around with this. And of course, if you turn off 10 lines, the lines are going to appear exactly how they're supposed to. Here. Uh, now for the text, this is in Serbian because while well, I'm from Serbia, this is just something from my school uh, years, a school project. So uh, as you can see here, we can pretty much customize everything. And if I select any of the elements, uh, they will transfer from CAD geometry into Revit geometry. So if this was a hatch in Revit, it's going to be a filled region here. Uh, or uh, in CAD, if it was a hatch here, it's going to be a filled region. As you can see, it's a a CAD detail filled region. Same thing goes here for this green filled region, so on and so forth. Also text, you can just double click and you can edit the text. So here you can edit maybe CM for centimeters or something like that. You can maybe make this like that and then select the line, make it longer. And also for lines, uh, you can go here to line style and each layer is going to be loaded in. So here we have all of the different layers as new align styles. So you can even manipulate that. You can select one of these and then make it, I don't know, whatever you want to use. You can make it into a wide line. Doesn't make sense here, but it is possible. Also here we have lines like this and so on and so forth. Now the biggest downside that I found with this is the fact that here the dimension line, well, as you can see, it has been separated into, well, separate line work. It isn't a Revit dimension. It, it doesn't copy the dimension style, which is a little bit annoying, but I think it isn't really that much terrible if, if you want to, if you don't like these, you can always select them, get rid of them and uh, get rid of all of these little dimensions. And then of course you can come back in uh, with regular Revit dimensions when you delete everything. Okay, it does take a while to delete everything. Uh, but once you uh, get rid of all of the dimensions, you can come back in with regular Revit dimensions and then you can dimension whatever you might want to dimension. And you can place dimensions over that. So uh, if you don't like the existing ones, you can of course create new ones with the dimension style that's available uh, with your Revit project. For example, this dimension style is available with my template. If you want it, the link is in the description. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that's how you can manipulate all of these, play around, make sure that everything looks exactly how you want it. And of course, for example, for this build region, you can of course go to edit boundary and then you can change that boundary. Okay, this doesn't look good, uh, but you can play around with it. Maybe make some additional changes like this. Okay, now we have an overlap. So for example, just like that. And now that is a different build region. So feel free to manipulate your details as much as you would like to. Now, also apart from uh, having the ability to load in CAD files, you can also load in images. So for example, I find a lot of these images of details on a line. And then uh, what you can do is uh, just go and open up that 
detail image. Okay, so here we have basically the same detail, but as an image. So let's say you just searched Google images for a detail for something. You can find the image. Okay, this one is really low resolution, but you can find a nice uh, image and then you can just go here to annotate and use detail lines and basically just draft over that and create your detail in Revit. And once you've created all of the, all of the necessary lines and everything, just using this uh, this here image as sort of to, to help you out. And once you're done with tracing it, you can of course select the image, delete it, and then the lines will stay behind that. Now, if it's of course a lot more work than this approach, but it is uh, available. So if you find a detail online, maybe it's going to, as an image, maybe it's going to be a lot quicker to just uh, trace it over than to just look at it and then try to replicate it in Revit. So anyways, that's how you create these uh, details in Revit using a, a CAD details that you have uh, from earlier on. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Tell me if you have learned something new ab about Revit. And also I have a whole little course on details in Revit. It's available on my Patreon. That's the second link in the description. And also there you can find all of my Revit project files like this detail that I have been showing you in this tutorial. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, make sure to like and share this video and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.